He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl Tally Moss, and I want to welcome you to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you part two of me transplanting seedlings for my emergency coronavirus garden. Okay. Let's get started. The first thing I did this morning was I went to the side of my shed where I keep my five-gallon buckets, and I picked out some buckets that I'll use for this project. A few years ago, I had a benign tumor removed from my esophagus, vocal cords, and my thyroid, and I couldn't speak well for almost a year, and I didn't get my singing voice back until about 18 months and it really and it doesn't sound the way it used to but I'm not complaining because as long as I have breath I'm grateful for whatever kind of notes I can get out so while I was re recovering from the major surgery I still wanted to garden but I couldn't do a lot of bending over and while I was healing but I started a container garden, and every day my son would bring me more buckets uh, because I started off with like about 10 and I ended up about 50, and I've even given some of them away. So this is a good way to uh, garden if you live in an apartment, if you're on a uh, fixed income and you don't have money to invest in buckets, you can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And you can also go check out the uh, like donut shops, uh, Fireside, is it Firehouse Subway? Yeah, that's where I got a lot of the red buckets from. At least my son did. And those bakeries, sometimes they will give them to you absolutely free if they're all food grade. Okay, gardeners, I'm getting ready to plant eight seedlings of okra. Uh, you remember in the first part of this series, I told you guys I got this okra at Home Depot. And I wasn't planning on growing any because I already had a lot. But I'm going to grow this okra. One, because it's healthy. Two, it grows very well in the Texas heat when it's real hot down here in the summertime. So I'm going to put two seedlings. I'm going to take them and lose real carefully. And, and I'm going to put two in each one. Now, I've done this before. I showed you all those buckets that I used uh, previously. Uh, so, yeah, it works well if you just put two into each five-gallon bucket. So, the first thing I'm going to do is shovel some wood chips in the bottom of the buckets. Oh, wait a minute. I need to show you something. These buckets do not have any holes up underneath here. They have drainage holes on the sides. I started doing this few years ago and you can see right there is another hole so it will always have this little inch or two of reserve it's really about right there so it'll have an inch of reserve of water okay because when it gets hot down here guys it gets really really hot I'll come back after I put some wood chips in all four five gallon buckets right over there I'm digging up wood chips and I can see mycorrhizal fungi. That's the little white stuff on it. And an earthworm. They love wood chips. They bring them to the yard. So I'm going to drop this one down in here. And if I dig up another one, I'll put one in each of the containers. I'll let you look down in there and you'll see about three inches of wood chips. These wood chips will be breaking down all through spring, summer, and fall. Okay? The next thing I'm going to do is put some potting soil that I got out of containers that I grew last year. And then on top of that, 
I put some fresh potting soil and I'll top it off with compost because that compost, every time you water it, it'll act like compost tea. Okay? I have the old container soil and I decided to put a little fresh potting mix in here. Uh, I buy whatever's on sale. This happened to be Vigoro for $6.99. I forgot how many cubic feet I'll, I'll insert it in here. And you guys remember this. My good old homemade compost. I'm going to fill it up to the top. And then I'm going to plant my seedling. Right you know, there. I have the compost at the height that I want it. Because I want to leave some room so that I could put wood chips or leaves or straw as a mulch. And now I'm going to try to do this guys on camera. I'm not sure if I can do it. Okra is finicky. It is actually best to direct sow the seeds. It does better. I'm trying to gently separate these. And I got a funny feeling that they all may not survive. So instead of planting two, I'm going to plant three. And then I'll eliminate by snipping off the weakest link. Because that's plenty for my daughter. Okay, so now I'm going to dig a hole. And I'm going to drop that bad boy right there. Press down, and I'll dig a hole right here, and backfill, and let's see, this one has a lot of them in it. I was looking through the plants for the ones that have the most um, seedlings, but they all bunched there right together. I hate that because I don't want to, I don't want to damage them. I really need two hands to pull this apart. But I'm going to just go for it. And like I said, I'm going to uh, get rid of the weakest link. Okay, so here are two. And I'm going to put one right here. Okra will grow in almost any type of soil. Sandy soil, except for clay, because you can't get through that. So I'm kind of, I kind of wish I didn't put so much compost in here. I wish I had saved it for something else because it really didn't need that. So now I got one we're going to put right here. Okay, I'm not going to plant this one. See, I bent it while I was shaking it loose. Okay, let me see if I can show you. See where it's bent right there? That's no good. So that'll go into the compost. Let's try another one. <laughs> Try to shake some of these a little loose. Okay, that's a good one. Healthy. Close it up. And it's not too late to direct sow okra. Because uh, May is usually the time that I really put okra in. But I have a larger greenhouse, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, start it uh, earlier. I'm going to put these in the greenhouse uh, whenever there's a cooler temperature at night. Okay, so we have three there. And let's examine all three of these. Okay, this one is not going to work. See where it's broken right there? Let's get rid of that one. And we'll put one here. This stem looks good. I hope I was filming that. I had the camera in the right position. Okay, and let's see what we got over here. Let's shake it gently. That's a good one. Let's put it over here. This is a good one. That's a good one. Nothing appears to be broken. And this one, all right. Okay, so I got my three. I'm gonna put this one right here. And this is a good time to plant these actually because they're just beginning to get their second and third set of leaves. Actually, I only see the second set if you look in real close. Let me see. 
so I can show you right there. Okay, so now we have three for here. Let's do it like a triangle. I feel a rock or a stick. Let's move that out. It's not going to hurt anything, but I know I felt a rock. My grandchildren used to take the rocks and throw them in the compost, and they would try to get it out before I found out. They would come back there and play games. Now they're not allowed to play back here. They could play in the front yard as long as an adult is outside. So you see what I'm doing? So see that? That's another rock. Because I have a, a area where this compost bin was that had was rocked to keep weeds out and uh, so they started playing with it okay so this looks really good the compost is very moist because it was out in the rain but I'm going to still water it just a little bit and since this is going to bear fruit anything that bears fruit above the ground I use the Fish emulsion and seaweed. So I'm not going to water these on camera. Um, because, you know, I don't want to waste your time. But I'm going to give my daughter three rows, th three of these. And I may stick one or two of these in the garden bed somewhere. I'll let you know tomorrow what I decide. Okay. So that's it for right now. We're going to move on to something else. My daughter. Okay, gardeners. I called my daughter and I told her how much okra I had. She said, oh no, that's too much. So I went ahead and put two right there. I put two right there and just one right here. And I would thin these two out. And uh, since we went on lockdown, uh, she doesn't have to go to school like she thought she was going to, she can work from home and do conference calls with her teachers and they can email the assignments that they're giving the children. So yeah, I just went ahead and put three of them in here. Actually, five, two, four, five over there. Okay, everything's looking good. I'm not gonna water again because it's still real wet. Okay, I'm really moving on now. <laughs> Let me show you something beautiful. The first two arches are my Concord grapes, and we got a few grapes last year. I think we're gonna get more. And the bench right there to the right, the arch bench, those are noble muscadines. We got a lot of those. I hope to make wine this year. Hi guys, I just wanna to talk to you for a few minutes. I was sitting here filming up my containers with this rainwater that I had in these barrels. Uh, they're not barrels, they're actually concrete cement mixers. I d discovered them from Lead Farmer 73, that he and his wife were planting uh, some seeds in them. And uh, I said, okay, well, I've got extra flowers, seedlings that I started in my grow room. I'm going to get me four of these and I'm going to plant some of the flowers and just sit them by the fruit trees because I have a lot of wood chips. Uh, let me pan around here so you guys can see. I have a lot of wood chips on the ground and uh, they are not broken down enough in my opinion to start growing in them. So I said I'll just use these little trays here so I was out here filling up some containers because I'm getting ready to give my plant some Neptune seaweed and fish emulsion fertilizer and I was just thinking wow we can make all the plants that we want but there's somebody who has a higher authority than us that can make our change make us change our plans in a second and I got up to get the seaweed and fish fertilizer to put into this jar and lo and behold a beautiful tiny hummingbird flew past me I think it was attracted to the red right up there on those bumblebees and then it flew 
two. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit and see if you can see those red C9 Christmas decoration bulbs that I have in my tree that I'm going to leave in there that I use to protect my tree when it bloomed too early and we had a, a low temperature. And then I just thought about something. It pecked on the little bulb and then it moved over to these two hummingbird feeders. Someone gave them to me last year for my birthday and they were empty and it flew away. Now I had that on my list to do, to fill those up. And when you fill them up, half of it goes down into these little, this little area here so that the hummingbirds can stick their beak through there and get the syrup. So once again, I had planned to do something, I had to change my plans. I immediately got up and filled those up with sugar water. And now I'm getting ready to put them back in that tree. When you're putting uh, hummingbird feeders out, you have to put them in a place where they can take shelter if another bird uh, or animal squirrel whatever tries to attack them they can move quickly among the branches in that tree now i've seen some people just hang them up close to a window so they can admire them but those people usually have a shelter over something uh, overhang over there where the birds can escape so and another thing i want to tell you in this pearl from cheryl don't Feed them that little package that you get at the dollar stores and they mark it down to I think about 50 cents at the end of the year. I, I'm guilty of that until I did more research. Those packages with the food coloring in it makes the birds, the hummingbirds sick. It weakens their immune system. So just give them sugar and water. A few tablespoons of sugar into the decanter. And the best ones to get are the glass ones because they will last longer. So I'm getting ready to go over there and put these back in the tree. And I hope that hummingbird comes back later and see that they're full and will tell its buddies to come and feast on the nectar in the hummingbird feeders because hummingbirds also pollinate your flowers and your fruit. Okay, guys, this is the conclusion of this video, but I will be bringing you in the next video, part three of how we are starting our emergency coronavirus garden. We're going to sow some seeds together. Okay. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button and share it with your friends. The end. <laughs>